Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a Kubernetes security auditing bot or uh, auditing agent that I built with LangGraph and AI. And I'm going to show you how I built it. I'm going to walk you through the code and we're going to see how it works all together. So let's get started and let's get started now. So before we get started with the actual demo and the code, I just want to talk a little bit about what LangGraph is. And I'm going to just explain a little bit through their own documentation that you can use. Now, this was my first ever LangGraph project. So for me also, I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert on LangGraph. I have used multiple different agent frameworks so far and building out different types of things. This is the first time I used LangGraph. It was certainly a little interesting the way they've done it. And I'll talk a little bit about what it is and how I think it's slightly different from some of the other agent frameworks that I've used. So first of all, with LangGraph, it's basically by the LangChain team or the team behind LangChain, which means that you get the benefit of a lot of the different tools and the capabilities that LangChain already provides, which means that a lot of the stuff, the libraries, the LLM interfaces, the tools, the tool chains, all of that stuff is something that you get with since you have with LangChain, LangGraph also gets the benefit of you being able to leverage that for building AI agents. Now, LangGraph essentially allows you to build AI agents like you can build state machines, which means you can create a state like so. And that's really what you would use to pass messages between the different nodes that are going through. So basically you have a state machine where you have messages stored in this particular state object, if you will, and you can create multiple nodes and edges that you can start referring to. So it basically works like a DAG. I'm not able to recall the full form of a DAG, which is, it's like a, it's a click graph, which you basically can create saying that you start with this node, then go to that node and then go to something else. And you you basically can create like a state machine where you can chart out where the nodes need to go. You can create conditional parameters to say that if this condition is satisfied, do this step. If this condition is not satisfied, do this step and so on. So the idea is that you use nodes and edges. So you start with nodes, you declare all the nodes. So in this case, there's a node called chatbot and then you can create, you can start with that node and then move on to another node and then another node and you can keep creating edges. So you can connect different processes to each other through the concept of edges. And you can also create conditional edges to say that, look, uh, I want you to go to this particular node only if this condition is met. So basically that's how LangGraph works. Now, LangGraph is not as simple, I would say, as let's say a Crew AI or some of the other agent frameworks that I worked with. I had to understand a lot of it from scratch and it was a little bit of a learning curve, but it was quite nice because I have built state machines. I have used AWS step functions and other type of state machine tools. I've also used Prefect and the Apache one to build out state machines. So this was kind of, I was able to leverage a little bit of that previous knowledge that I had to be able to do something like this with LangGraph. So that's how I built this application as well. Now, coming back to our actual application and the implementation that we have, I'm going to walk you through the implementation itself. Now, this is a Kubernetes bot. So basically what it's going to do, it's, it's going to use agents to do a Kubernetes security audit. And I'm going to give it some queries or I'm going to chat with it and give it some queries. And it's going to essentially run queries against a Kubernetes cluster that I'm hosting, which is intentionally vulnerable in many ways. So that's how this works. And I'll explain how it is and wh what I've done and what I did and what are the limitations of something like this as well. It's not a perfect Kubernetes security auditing tool, but definitely gets you quite a bit of the way there actually. So the idea here is that I already have a Kubernetes cluster running and I have some pods. Now I am using a project called Kubernetes Goat from Madhu Akula, who's a good friend of mine. Now Kubernetes Goat is a very interesting project because it has an intentionally vulnerable Kubernetes deployment. It has a whole bunch of things. You can use it to run different types of exploit scenarios for your Kubernetes. You can also learn obviously Kubernetes security through this. So I just used this and I also deployed it locally on my own machine using Kind. Now, if you've not checked out Kind, it's definitely worth checking out. Kind is Kubernetes in Docker. So in fact, this is a very nice project that you can use 
use to just spin up a quick Kubernetes cluster on your machine, bring down clusters, you can do testing of your applications. It's really nice because you can run Kubernetes inside Docker. So that's what kind is. Kubernetes in Docker is what kind is. Now you can also use this with ingress and load balancer and all this stuff. It's pretty simple and straightforward. I used kind. Of course, I have not used all the features or I have not given it all the capabilities. Whatever was required for Kubernetes Goat, I just used. And Kubernetes Goat has a very simple way to set up kind, which is very convenient. And that's what I ended up doing. Now, let me walk you through the actual Kubernetes audit tool that I built out. So the idea here is that we have a main graph, lang graph that is running. Now I'll just walk you through some of the key things here. We have a state, which is the state KIDS, which is your, uh, this is the state. That is, the, these are the messages that are being passed between each and every node. So the way it works in lang graph is that each and every node has the state and let us say it processes something, it passes the state to the next node through the edge. So that's why you need to have a state which is passed between each and every node and the next node gets the state of the previous node and it can use that state and all those messages to do the next step in the processing. So that's how a state object works. I also built a tool. So since obviously LangChain does not have a Kubernetes auditing tool, I built my own Kubernetes tool, which is basically exposed using the the, the tool uh, decorator here. So this is a tool decorator and uh, with LangGraph, you can use something called a tool node, which means that when you need your LLM to perform some action using a tool, that's when you can use a tool node. So that's where this was declared. So what this tool does is that it loads the Kubernetes config from the cube config file, which is basically uh, my uh, cube config file here. It uses that and it uses that to authenticate to the Kubernetes cluster. And then I have essentially said that, look, first of all, get the resources of what I want. And this is stuff that the LLM figures out, right? So the idea here is that the LLM figures out based on what I want from it, figures out which is the API version, the namespace, the query, etc. It builds, it constructs the query at runtime and queries it against the Kubernetes cluster. I've also had to build out a slightly more complex tool because I have to evaluate the query. So the query essentially checks whether all these parameters are there and then based on those parameters, it will also check whether the fields are there and it checks whether the operators are there and the optional values are there and all of that stuff and then comes up with the query. Now this query is run against the Kubernetes cluster and based on the responses of the query, you get a message that dump the the name of the pod the namespace which it's in on the screen so basically that's how it works so this is the tool this is the custom tool i built out this was the one that takes the most amount of time really I, or took the most amount of time in this particular case because i had to figure out how i just didn't need to query resources i needed to audit these resources for specific things for specific parameters. So for instance, I needed to audit resources that did not have app armor configs enabled, things like that, right? It needed to be not just querying resources, but you also need to query specific parameters and facets of those resources. That's why the query becomes a very important thing. So when you're using a tool or when you're declaring a tool in LangGraph, you need to provide the function calling parameters for it. So you need to say that, okay, you need to provide the API version, the kind, namespace, this and the query in this case you need to provide all four things and this will run the query against the kubernetes cluster and identify the specific resources that will fit the bill and this is entirely declared as a tool node right so this is the tool that we have our get resources tool is declared as a tool node so this is what we're using as one of the nodes in our graph so in our graph that we're creating this is one of the nodes we also, so if you look at the, the, the flow of things, you have an expert who essentially creates and breaks down the actual intent. So what is it, what is needed for a Kubernetes query to happen uh, for, or a Kubernetes security auditing query to happen? This is the job of the expert or the agent that is an expert. Then there is an engineer that behaves more like a router. So this is basically just to say that, okay, based on what the expert says, you need to route it to the right tool. Now, right now there's only one tool, but the engineer will basically route it to the right tool. And that is the tool node, which is your tool. So the edges, if you see expert talks to engineer, engineer talks to tool node and tool node, once the tool node 
what is done that's the end of the process so it starts with us checking with an expert the expert talk to an engineer who routes the query to a tool node and says that okay you need to query it like so a tool node basically that's the end of the flow here so that's how it works we've also added memory saver to add some kind of memory capability and store messages from previous runs although i have not used it in this particular variant of the kubernetes security audit and tool now if you look at the expert you will see that the expert is mostly it's all about the system prompt which is we are just essentially saying you're a kubernetes security expert the user is going to give you a thing that they want or a high level query in english that they want and you need to break that down into a specific structure with these kind of fields these kind of paths etc etc all of that stuff is something you need to do and then you need to also essentially have a message that looks like this if you want to add additional information to that particular message so that's what the expert does the engineer like i said just calls the right function so in this case the engineer just calls the tool node which is already something that i have spoken about to get this done now let's actually run this and i'm going to share the code on github and you can download this as well so let's run this and see the first query that we want to actually run so show me all the pods in the default namespace with no app armor policy configured now this is a very interesting and very important security parameter because if you are running a container in production you would ideally want some kind of a runtime security policy enabled which could be in the form of app armor or secomp or whatever it is i'm just looking for app armor in the default namespace so you'll see that so this actually gives you the query so it tells you that this is the query that you want to be querying so it says spec dot security contact dot se linux option operator not exists and it says that all of these are pods with app armor not enabled so this is very useful this is very nice because i can just enter whatever i want to query in plain simple english and that breaks it down to a very uh, specific technical query that uh, is queried against the kubernetes the uh, kubernetes tool that essentially queries the cluster with those specific parameters so this is very useful let me try another query let's look at another query show me pods in the default namespace with no limits configured there are some pods with no limits configured some pods are not so it says that spec container resource limits not exist if they don't have it you have uh, no limits configured on these specific ones versus this which was completely different this now shows you the ones that are not configured in fact i really liked the next query that i'm going to be running which is show me pods in the default namespace that have the default service account token mounted so now this is actually a very useful i don't think this is the right query i think i need to structure the query correctly show me pods in the default namespace that have the default service account token mounted not sure whether no i think for some reason this is uh, erroring out let me actually see whether this is not the right query by the way this should only query the service account token with the default service account load okay let's actually try that slightly different version of the query show me get me pods in the default namespace with the default service account loaded let's see whether the query changes based off of this yeah this is correct so we want to check whether any of the pods def- uh, that are running in the default namespace so most of the the actual application pods for kubernetes goat are running in the default namespace and we want to see whether any one of them have the default service account token mounted so sometimes you might see that this default service account might have a lot of privileges and as a result that might have a specific security impact so it's actually looking for service account name with the 
default service account name or default service account token mounted so actually if you want to validate whether that is true let's do kubectl describe pod this and you will see that our service account mounted in that is the default service account token so this is very useful when you want to query things in a simple way and you can actually run plain simple english queries and the llm translates that into the kubernetes query structure that we have written for the tool and it queries the kubernetes cluster for those issues so it's very nice simply because we don't have to remember queries we don't have to use purely an automated tool all the time in fact one of the things that i'm considering doing as a next version of this is to come up with 10 different security audit checks as the first part of the agent and then use that automatically to check the kubernetes cluster for it so that might be a very interesting way to do it also that's something i'm going to work on probably next but this is how i used langgraph in order to automate kubernetes security auditing something that i'm probably going to use in my own work stream as part of when i do kubernetes audit so it's very easy to work with to do this so i'm going to be of course sharing the code and you can please use it if you'd like i wouldn't say it's production ready yet but it's something that you can use by default without too much changes or configuration in terms of behavior This currently uses OpenAI GPT-4. It we are not using any of the other models, but you can very well use any of the other models. You could use Olama. You could use any of the other models. It doesn't have to be OpenAI. All right. With that, I come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and like this video and share it if you find this useful. Thank you very much.